Mylon's Secret Castle is one of those more obscure, kind of hidden games on the NES. For those who have played it, usually considering it rather cryptic and difficult to navigate through. However, nowadays, is Mylon's Secret Castle just misunderstood, and is it worth playing today? Mylon Secret Castle was originally released in 1986 for the Japanese Famicom. It was brought over to North America in 1988 and didn't see a European release during this era, though later on when it's been re-released on Virtual Console, Europe finally got a chance to check it out. In Mylon Secret Castle, you're playing as Mylon, who comes from the land of Hudson. The whole land communicates through music, but Mylon is unable to do so, so he ends up leaving. Eventually, he comes back to find out that the evil warlord Maharito has actually taken over the castle, kidnapped the queen, and is keeping her hostage. It's then up to Mylon to travel through Castle Garland, take out the evil guardians of Maharito, who are guarding the Seven Crystals, and eventually defeat the evil warlord and save the kingdom. Castle Garland in the game is broken up into four different floors, and this includes a well that you'll also have to explore. Most of the game is pretty cryptic in nature, where you don't really know where you need to go to next or what exactly you need to do. There are shops and other things that you'll be able to find, and an old man named Barnaby will be able to sell you items as well as sometimes give you hints to help you out, though this can still be a little bit difficult to either figure out what the hints mean, or even when you do know what to do, actually getting to do it. The game has a lot of different items that you'll have to find or buy throughout, and usually this is how you progress. You need an item, then you're able to go to the next room. In that room, you'll find another item and then be able to go to the next room. So on and so forth, eventually fighting the bosses along the way, working your way up the castle and eventually making it to the top in order to fight Maharito. One of the weird things about the game is that you use bubbles in order to attack your enemies. Of all the weapons out there, this is still one of the strangest, though it wasn't the only game on NES where you actually have bubbles as your main form of attacking. Besides the key items or tools that you'll need in order to advance, there are some other items as well, including hearts to replenish your health, umbrellas which will allow you to fire your bubbles faster with each one that you end up getting, plenty of money along the way that you'll need to buy different items, the Hudson Bee makes an appearance, finding him will allow you to have a shield that will allow you to take several hits, and you can even replenish the shield by finding hearts, though if you run out completely of the shield, you're unable to bring it back and you end up finding another bee in order to get the shield back back. There's honeycombs so you can actually get more to your total amount of health, as well as the music boxes so you can play the mini game. Here you must collect the right notes in order to get a certain extra amount of bonus money once the game ends up playing out. It's a little fun distraction that you'll be able to do from time to time and can actually really help you out if you're good at it in order to get through the game a little bit quicker since you'll have enough money to buy whatever you need. Then there are the tools that you need in order to advance through the game, and there's a lot of them here. I won't go over every single one of them, but I'll go over quite a few, including the shoes that you can be able to use springs, the strength potion so that you can get hit by a boxing glove and shrink down to a smaller size to fit through tight areas. Yep, that's a part of the game. The lantern so that you're able to see in the well, and there's actually two shops that have it, with one being a little bit cheaper. The vest, which will actually help you during the flame part of the well. One part of the well is completely covered with fire that you'll have to slowly navigate, and while you'll still take damage, you take far less with the vest. There's the hammer that can bust open certain walls to find certain levels, as well as the saw that can open up certain windows so that you're able to go in and find bosses in certain levels as well. There's also the roller shoes, the jump higher, a tube to see hidden blocks, and a sword that'll be able to power up your attack. There's also items like the cane, crown, and the crystals that will allow you to advance through the castle and get eventually to the top floor. One of the more disappointing aspects for me in the game is the bosses. There's seven of them, but they all play relatively the same. In fact, a couple of them are just redone sprites of other ones you've already fought. And it's pretty much the same fight every time, just a little bit tougher due to them maybe moving quicker or firing at more projectiles. But still, it's pretty much dodge the bubbles and fire up at the enemy, repeat until you eventually defeat them. When it comes to the controls, the overall bubble combat is okay, especially if you're able to upgrade it with a few umbrellas to have a faster rate of fire, but the jumping as well as its overall movement can be a little bit slow and clunky at times. There's also no invincibility frames when you get hit from enemies, so enemies can really quickly drain all of your health. If you do game over, there's no password or save feature, though you can continue if you hit left and start at the main title screen to continue from where you left off, but if you turn off the game, you're going to be starting over from the beginning. 
Thankfully, this was something that was actually changed in the Nintendo Game Boy release of the game a few years later, which actually featured a password and a continue option outright on the main title screen. I will also say it's one of those games that if you are able to finally play through it and see it to the end, the ending itself isn't really anything special. But then again, it is a relatively early NES title where the endings still weren't all that great. While we've never seen a direct sequel to Mylon's Secret Castle as far as core gameplay is concerned, the series didn't end here. There was the re-release for Game Boy, which modified things a bit, making it a tad bit easier, love that password system, and I actually highly recommend it. If you liked Mylon's Secret Castle but thought maybe it was a bit too hard for your taste, or if you're interested in the game but want a little bit of an easier version, the Game Boy one I actually highly recommend. There's also Do Re Mi Fantasy, which is a sequel, but it's more of an action platformer instead of the action puzzle exploration game that the original was. This came out in 1996 for the Super Famicom and didn't make it over to North America, at least not until the virtual console re-release many years later, and even then it was still the Japanese version just available for us to buy here in North America. However, even if you don't know Japanese, it's still one of those ones you're able to import and still get through the game with relative ease. There was actually also three spin-offs for the Satellaview during this time period, once again only in Japan. And surprisingly, until this video I didn't even know it existed, there actually was a Mylon puzzle game released in 2006. It's basically a bust a move clone where you have the bubbles slowly coming down and you have to move Mylon back and forth and throw the bubbles up in order to pop them. But just the fact that this exists is actually really cool. There's never been a direct sequel, and there's not a whole lot of talk of bringing the series back in any way, especially with Hudson going under a few years ago, but there are some other franchises that have come back from this era. Way Forward, who did the A Boy and His Blob re-release kind of remake thing for the Nintendo Wii, did discuss doing other NES games, and this one was brought up, and I would absolutely love it, as Way Forward is one of my favorite developers. My Line Secret Castle is one of those games that I do have a lot of fond memories of. In fact, it's one of the games my parents love, so whenever I get to talk about NES or retro gaming in general with them, this usually ends up being mentioned. The game is hard, for sure, especially not knowing where to go and it doesn't really guide you all that well, so it's one of those ones you'll need to take notes, or draw maps, or even get a guide flat out to make sure you're able to travel through. It has flaws, it is difficult, and it doesn't age as well as I would like it to, but I do recommend giving it a look if you're looking for something maybe a little bit different in an action platformer. But anyway guys, that's going to wrap up this retro review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course I hope you enjoyed.